Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Oil and Gas Inspection. If you so far like my way of teaching, don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Today, I am moving to an interesting topic. Generally, on site, contractors have a laboratory where they can do their own calibration. This type of calibration labs are having two different purposes. One is to calibrate the relief valve and pressure gauges and pressure recorders or sometimes temperature recorders to be used for hydro test purpose. That means this calibration is temporary. This will be valid only for the hydro test. And the same calibration shop can be used for bench calibration. That means for the permanent calibration of project instruments and gauges like pressure transmitters, temperature transmitters, etc. etc. Today, at the beginning, I will tell you the theory part, what we are going to discuss. Then you will see some live demonstration of a pressure gauge and a safety relief valve calibration from the lab directly. Hope you will like this. So let us start. Calibration or validation is basically nothing but a comparison with a master equipment or master tool, which is already calibrated from the company approved third party. And of course, the master instrument has to be very accurate. So it, it should be from a very good brand with a consistent result. We need to calibrate all the measuring equipment like inspection gauges, inspection tools, testing equipment like pressure and temperature gauges, recorders, which always provide us final measurement or result. Let's say one hydro test will be decided by this pressure gauge or temperature gauge reading. So it is very important to know. Let us see the topics we are going to cover in this video. What is calibration? What is validation? Types of calibration in construction project? The demonstration. Validation is generally done for the welding power source, which is also comparison of its output with a calibrated multimeter or clamp meter. This one we will be not discussing here. Just I have mentioned to describe the term of validation. For a calibration lab, what are the major equipment or instrument we require? Third party calibrated dead weight tester, third party calibrated master pressure gauge, calibrated relief valve, test manifold, calibration temperature gauge and hand tools. Before we start calibration, we need to check the pressure gauge if it is physically intact. That means there is no broken glass or already if there is any damage in the needle, it will not show you consistent or good results. Before we fit the instrument to our calibration setup, we need to see the threads are perfectly cleaned so that there will be no leakage occur. Pressure gauges and pressure recorder shall have a range such as test pressure, which is 30 to 80 percent of its range. Calibration interval pressure gauges shall not exceed one month. Pressure relief valves shall be tested and dated tagged within two weeks prior to hydrostatic test. In no case, pressure relief valve set pressure shall be more than the spring range mentioned in the relief valve data sheet. This is very important because the full name of relief valve is pressure safety relief valve. It is releasing the excess pressure and thus keeping the equipment as well as the hydro test technician working around to stop any accident. So the spring range of a pressure relief valve is very, very important. Stickers shall be applied indicating the latest calibration date and the validity. Pressure gauge calibration. The dead weight tester third party calibrated shall be installed in the calibration table and checked for the correct leveling through the integrated bubble level of the tester. A third party pressure gauge with six month validity to be used as a master gauge installed as a reference. The equipment to be calibrated shall be installed in the instrument port of the dead weight tester tightened in position with the dial facing the technician. The pressure shall be increased rotating the hand pump spindle clockwise unit 30% of gauge or recorder range has been reached. Meanwhile, spin the counterweight in the dead weight tester position refer to the dead weight tester operating instruction on the correct operation 
and application. When the piston floats and its column of oil while being rotated, the precise pressure has been reached. Also, there are limit markings on the deadweight tester shaft to ensure the pressure stability. A comparison between the total piston weight and the gauge readings indicate the accuracy of the instrument being calibrated. Observe reading of the instrument under test. If the reading of the gauge being calibrated is in error, then the gauge could be adjusted manually to reset the needle indicator and retest in accordance with this procedure. All reading has to be taken from the master gauge and match with the slave that means instrument to be calibrated. Error will be deadweight tester weights to reading of the master and slave instrument. The deadweights to reading of master and slave instrument that will be the error. Gauges and readers shall be verified at an incremental stage of 30%, 50% and 80% of the instrument scale respectively. This procedure must be carried out in reverse order. That means 30, 50, 80, again 80, 50 and 30. Plus minus accuracy or tolerance may be vary within plus minus 1% of the span during the pressure increases and pressure decreases. So this is the tolerance or acceptance. Time of holding pressure at each incremental and decremental steps shall be the time to stabilize the pressure plus the time required for the inspector to verify the reading. The maximum time for holding should not be more than one minute. Testing and calibration shall be witnessed by QC inspector and sticker or tag shall be dated and signed. Pressure increase or decrease shall be carried out in a slow and gentle manner to prevent strain on the Bourdon tube and disturb the accuracy. Now you can see the pressure relief valve calibration. I will demonstrate behind the video. So this will relate you from theory to the practical. Why the relief valve has to be calibrated? To prove the valve does not leak at equipment operator pressure. The relief valve shall be connected to the deadweight tester. The relief valve operation should be in the closed position. The spindle is shown to close the blow up pressure. Place a weight at the deadweight tester and open spindle until the relief valve pop off. This will release the pressure and gauge in deadweight tester will go back to the zero. Repeat the operation until the correct weights are placed on the deadweight tester to represent the PSI. This will release the pressure and the gauge in deadweight tester will go back to zero. Repeat the operation until the correct weights are placed on the deadweight tester to represent the PSIG. Once the required PSIG setting is met, then lock the spindle by means of locking nut and replace spindle shroud or cap and run sealing wear to ensure that the shroud cannot be taken off. Twenty five percent pressure gauge calibration. The target gauge here is six thousand pound. We'll go for twenty five percent. So twenty five percent is one thousand five hundred PSI. So you get 1,500. Yeah, so we have reached 1,500. 25%. You can compare with the gauge. Yeah, so it's 25% rising, it is already calibrated. Now we will go for Now we will go for the 50%, which is 3,000 PSI. You know, we need to raise the pressure very slowly so that the spring of the pressure gauge will not get sudden pressure which may damage the spring of the targeted pressure gauge to be calibrated. So now we 
we are approaching 2000 psi we have to go up to 3000 so we are at 2000 psi we'll wait for a while and hold this pressure somewhere to get the pressure stabilized then we'll check if you can see the pressure gauge it is 2000 psi also generally when you buy a new gauge the tolerance of defect observed is generally very low so very seldom we need to adjust the pressure gauge so now a technician he is going to the next range which is 75 percent which is 4500 let him raise slowly in the meantime let us have a look in the calibration shop it is built on site and you can see there are different types of standard calibration photos this is for pressure indication calibration and you see how nicely they have kept this relief valve vertically relief valve should be stored so that the spring settings should not be disturbed you can see in the other room the people other technicians are busy engineers are busy for making reports because we need to take care this is pressure this is dangerous also generally people layman who has no work in this room are not allowed and maintenance of these deadweight testers are also very very important any leakage any kind of malfunctioning could have been dangerous it could even kill people so now we reach 3000 psi which is 50 percent so we will go to 75 percent so in the 50 percent also we have observed the gauge deviation gauge to be calibrated is within the tolerance limit what is our tolerance 0.5 0.5 to 1 percent plus minus so 75 percent is 4500 psi generally these are all 100 percent witness point for the contractor contractor QC 4500 for oh, 5 eh? yeah the pressure stabilization You can see here also the pressure gauge deviation is negligible. So we will again gradually go to the hundred percent of the range. See the tools used here are basic hand tools. So there is nothing much. So basically this shop is approved for the site site hydro test purpose use pressure gauges and relief valves which will be used for hydro test also it is a permanent calibration for the electrical instruments also they have PIT TIT pressure gauges so now it is 100% of the range so you can see here the gauge actually this is very nicely calibrated so there is no more tolerance required the adjustment and all these things almost not required at this moment so now he will go down also in the same stage 75 percent 50 percent and 25 percent and then gradually he will make it zero so now down, we, came, we came back to same 75 percent same procedure 4500 psi more or less 0.5 percent or 1 percent so you see no adjustment required he is waiting a bit for the pressure stabilization now he will go down again so now we will go for 50 percent you see by rotating the hand wheel he can make the minute adjustment but from this valve he can reduce the pressure little bit faster to save some time but while raising pressure it is not possible raising pressure he has to do very slowly step by step very slowly maybe two to five psi step 
minor adjustment increasing or decreasing he is doing it through the precision hand wheel so we are at 50 percent now <coughs> again you see the reading is same you don't need to adjust anything so there is always a tolerance that's why it is called pressure gauge gauges are not instrument gauges are having always a higher tolerance compared to the instrument now he is reducing again through the valve now we will be stopping at 1500 that will be 25 percent precise adjustment the increasing he is doing through hand wheel so last time you can see the pressure gauge reading is also do not need to adjust it is okay now our calibration is completed but we need to see the pressure gauge needle should stop at zero means when there is no pressure it should show zero not positive or not negative so that is also a mandatory requirement that the pressure is zero it will not go to minus because there is a stopper in the gauge but at least the zero is showing zero it is calibrated put the calibration sticker and it's done similar relief valve is also a comparison with the digital master gauge with the relief valve so the set pressure you will check one or twice once or twice if it is popping on the set pressure then it is done now we are going to set the relief valve to a pressure of 219 psi you can see the technician is already setting up the relief valve on position so here we need to take care also that we should raise the pressure gradually very slowly so that it will not damage the seal or spring of the relief valve spring range should not be much higher or much lower than the set pressure otherwise the relief valve will not pop up on right pressure and the relief valve was previously calibrated so he is opening the car seal which is set before so we will concentrate on the master gauge because that reading is very crucial for us that is the reading is our basis of comparison though we are telling it calibration it is basically a validation we are validating the set pressure or pressure gauge reading in respect to pressure gauge so it's putting some lubricant so that spring range can be adjusted to the required set pressure filling the valve with the oil so that there is no air void and we can get the reading properly you see the pressure is rising gradually set pressure is 294 set pressure is 219 so the spring range of the relief valve here is 500 psi which looks little bit higher but that's what they have now but in the site we should not do this because this is a safety aspect in the high spring range relief valve spring also harder so it may not pop in the lower test pressure but still it is 50 percent of the spring range so hopefully this selection of the relief valve is okay see from this hole it will be it will be popping and the pressure will get low 294 if you see when the pressure pops the digital gauge reading 
is going gradually lower. So now almost it is set on spring already set on 250. It is increasing a bit so that it will be set to 294 ultimately. So you can see at 256, 257, 259. <coughs> so it is set now 256 because it is popped. So it will increase further. 266 so it is set on 266 now it is getting down it is getting down that means it is popping releasing pressure the spring should be around 30 to 40 psi more higher 70 so now it is it is set around 270, so it has to tighten it more. It is almost very near now. It is 290, so only 3-4 PSI. <coughs> so hopefully this will be done now. 91, 92, 93, 94. See, it is set exactly 94. It started popping from 94. So, you can see how the pressure relief valve is getting set, the spring. What you will do now, you will check it again, one more time. You can see after 94, it is getting down. Even he is increasing the pressure, it is getting down, you see. So, the setting is done. Now, anybody can tamper this setting, no, on the side. Anybody, if he rotates this head, it will be again tampered, the pressure will be. So he will lock the nut and then he will put the cover and later he will put the car seal back. So that, and then he will put the sticker and validate this for another 15 days as per our standard here. So you can see some relief valve which is already set up. It will be sent to site, keeping it vertically this way. And after the setup date over, they, it will come back again and recalibrate it for the next pressure test. Hope you understand clearly because we have the demonstration video along with this. If you have any questions, please put in the comment box. If you like my video, don't forget to share and subscribe. Meet you in the another quality topics in my next video. Thank you.